there. Could you just come down to the front stage for a moment? We just a small technical hitch. And um, just when he's doing that, I'll just tell you a little story. Um, my wife is backstage, Angela, um, is from Galway. And about 40 years ago, we were traveling home from after we uh, after we down with Angela's parents. And outside, down the slow, there was a guy sitting on a big, huge brown case. And um, we spoke a cigarette and he his tongue. I said, we give this fellow a lift, he looks, he looks interesting. So we got him into the, we did a little small fiesta, and we got him into the fiesta, but getting the case in was nearly impossible. We got him in, and he told me he was a miller, and we brought him to Kenny Gavin. He was so interesting, we decided to bring him to Dublin. We had a conversation, I couldn't understand, he didn't know anything about milling, you know. But two years later, and we were watching the Late Late Show, and uh, Gabe Bourne introduced this guy as Philip Tracy. He was a millionaire. <laughs> I didn't know what a millionaire was, but uh, it was Philip Tracy. And uh, now I understand what this, uh, the, 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 the big case was. So whatever, it was great to meet him and a, and a lovely guy. We were delighted with his success. And uh, Francis was very him. And I think Francis deserves another round of applause. He did so many things. I'm not going to delay you too long. These are photographs. Um, I think you've, at this stage we know that Agnes and Jack, um, we've met them. Um, I know they went around County Mead, the historical sites, and they took photographs uh, there. And this is just a brief su summary of, of the photographs that they took. Firstly, um, this is Slane, uh, Slane Abbey. Um, it's a lot different today, the vegetation. Um, has, has been taken away. But you can see um, Jack and Agnes are sitting at the bottom of the wall. Oh, Jack, sorry, not, it's Jack and family friend. Uh, and we assume that Agnes is taking the, the, the photo. <coughs> um, see them right at the bottom of the wall. And that's just, that's just a close up. And as we said, the resolution would have been a lot better if we could do the full resolution, but unfortunately, um, technology hasn't um, caught up with us that well. Okay. Just on this photograph, and just uh, today, you won't see, this obviously was an entrance to the Abbey, and today, the wall on the right exists, but the wall on the left doesn't, so we're just, um, it's, it's something that it doesn't show up that often in photographs. This leaves no um, uh, question. It's back to Bobby, uh, covered in vegetation. And again, can you see the family family? Yeah. And this family friend that we don't know the name of, she's there on the wall, and Agnes. And at this stage, we think it's Jack that's taken the photograph. There's a lovely photograph of a family friend in the cloister and we just zoom in and this gives you some idea of the resolution and what can be done with these plates uh, with uh, even better, better um, equipment. We're very, very fortunate and we have fantastic skills within Alma District Historical Society as you've seen here today. But also um, people like Sylvester Rowe um, acquires the, the right technology and goes out researches it and does it, and it's the wife Pauline as well in the recording equipment. So it's wonderful to have these people that can go out and get the right uh, piece for us. At Lonely Castle, I'm not going to tell you too much about it, there's another slide coming up, and Marina's going to give you some lovely history about it. But I just captured the beauty of the, the castle in its day, 130 odd years ago. This is a magnificent photograph. This is one of the um, Tony Holton was a friend of mine and he wrote The River Boyne. We've discussed this many, many times. But if he had seen this photograph uh, and what he could have done with it as well. This is the old mill, no longer as it exists. Uh, and you get a close up of the mill race. So the water is running into the mill. An old stone that has served its time and is no longer uh, a fuse. The mill right won't use it. You see the haystack in the corner? No. Oh. And that's what I'm saying, 
there are so many aspects of these photographs that, that so many people in the future will be able to pick out different things uh, at different times. Trimbletown Castle. And here we have the King Hanley, we have uh, and some of the characters and people that, that Maura has spoken uh, about earlier. John Hanley and we think these, these two people come up that we believe they're servants and the future later on cares uh, talk. New Grinch. Um, this is a very early photograph um, and it's lovely to see only last Saturday, um, I brought my granddaughter, five-year-old, and um, we've been going to New Jerusalem Interpret Centre every Friday for coffee after her nursery. And she always wanted to see what was in the tomb, and I told her I'd fight when she's five, I'd bring you. And I couldn't believe what a five-year-old could take in from the guide. And uh, from when she was home, and um, her mum mom said, did you see the circles on the stones? And she said, mum, they're... They're spirals. <laughs> uh, she took in everything about the water colour. She told her grandmother that it doesn't leak. It has to, she didn't know how, how old it was. It was very old, but it didn't leak. <laughs> and she, she got the thing about one day of the year when it lights up. And um, a five year old. So I want to pay tribute to the people in the New Brains that are incredible. And on the day we met two ladies from Boston who couldn't get back, wanted to go to Slane, and we brought them to Slane, gave them a lift to Slane. And there were all the compliments they had for the visit, the welcome, and the professionalism, and everything in Newbridge. And you know something, there's an awful lot of people you have to meet, an awful lot of people here who haven't been. So the place you go, it's fantastic. This is the lintel. And this is the lintel that led, led Professor Kelly to know there was something important about this, and obviously, and uh, we know the history of that in the 21st century. Spire. <coughs> These are the stones. Today, the character, that's a fantastic photo because it, it gives it a very eerie sense of uh, the stones overlooking um, the north of the hill. <coughs> Not quite in line with the summer, uh, the, uh, the uh, uh, winter solstice, but um, it actually uh, is coming around. But it, I think it's a beautiful photograph and it's a wonderful <coughs> one. This is amazing. Here we have Jack, Agnes and the family friend. And what they're sitting on, I didn't realise, is the slippage. So today when we go to Newbridge we see this lovely stone facade. The white facade with the granite. <coughs> and I didn't realise the last week and, uh, that what the family friend we are sitting on is that slippage. And it comes down as far as the, uh, the stone. And it's a wonderful piece of history. Um, and to have the family there, it's, it's amazing. There they are in the, in the glory. We don't know who's taking that photograph, so, um, but it's wonderful to see. And it's wonderful to think that the thought of New Grange was so important, even then. This garden castle, I'm just going to briefly here, Maria is going to give you a lovely history of the, the castle itself later on. She's more photographs of it. I just pictured on the churchyard and, and the church and just looking through the mullions and the castle. And as I said, the, the resolution that we have there is so much more if you could use um, and the full resolution on, on what we can do in the future. The beloved Dunmore. Absolutely incredible place. And today we have a member of a society who is researching the Round Towers. We have a talk coming up in uh, October. We were with him in Monastery Vice there recently. He's a new hypothesis on why these towers were there. And it's, it's something that's new and, and innovative. And I think it's well worth it if you have time to come to hear Ali uh, in October. The Colum Hill's house, the Plum's house, one of the oldest stone uh, churches. <coughs> we still claim that they're the first stone church in Ireland. 
uh, and we will give them that. But obviously, stone became a very important medium of building. Francis and Patrick. Again, in its nobly natural setting, today is very well manicured, but it's nice to see it in a raw, raw form. And we see the engraving of St. Patrick in the middle. These cups. <coughs> and this is a good crucifixion. Sorry. This cross we don't know. We've done a lot of research, um, and you can imagine the depth of knowledge we have within now from the District Historical Society is immense. Um, but we still just get the, uh, the, the location of this, this cross, so it's something if somebody knows or even has a, uh, a vague idea, we might go and find it. Uh, this engraving rock in Bow Park um, is just um, north of, of Slane um, and used to be an old pathway. And again, um, um, Tony was alive, Tony Ford features a few of these. In the river we see Agnes fishing. Agnes fishing. In the distance, come. You see here, between the trees, Slain Castle. Just a narrow shot. And you can see some of the resolution coming through it. Like, we assume this is um, a dressing table with a mirror. And look at the detail. Imagine if we can intensify that with, with more resolution. Like what, what can we see? Tagging herself. We need, we can ask Richie Harley. Um, has she got a fishing license or <laughs> what sort of fishing rod that is? You'd love to tell you. <laughs> and once again, the canvas. You see that the fishing um, here, there. But today, um, if you ever walk that or get the opportunity to walk there, it's still as calm as that. It's, it's beautiful. <coughs> and hopefully that the, the new greenway um, and there's development on it at the moment and uh, we'll be able to walk from Slain to Navan in the place of it. And this is just photographs again that talk of different angles of Maiden Rock. And finally, ladies and gentlemen, that's Castle Dexter Lock. Yeah, one that one wouldn't see too often. It's in Tony Houghton's book, uh, quite a bit of history about it. But it just shows that how calm and beautiful uh, the Boyne is. And we're very grateful and thankful to the Hamley family for leaving these precious uh, memories with us. <coughs> That's me done. Um, no. <laughs> We're taking a 15 minute um, break. There's a piece of coffee for everybody else. Uh, and it is 15 minutes, and you can't come back in here with coffee and tea. So, whatever you have to do, do it, do it quickly. And we get back here. The society members will be out there pushing you back in. With your, um, if you talk what you saw so far is good. Thank you.